one of Fordham's finest, back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Mike? Hi, Rich. Thank you for the kind words. Well, please, always. Where, where do, walk me through this one, Mike. Uh, how, how the heck did something like this happen last night? Uh, well, I wish I wasn't the one doing it. I wish it didn't happen, obviously, um, because he really is one of the beloved figures in franchise history. But it's been a relationship that uh, has not been good for a long time. You know, Oakley, when he was a player, he spoke his mind. And that's one of the things that people loved about him. And he spoke his mind um, in, in a tough way all the time when he was a player. And since he's been out, he's been very critical, uh, at times pretty harsh, uh, not only on the organization, but on, on Jim Dolan specifically. So it's made for an estranged relationship. Uh, and there have been times they've tried to to patch it up. There have been olive branches extended, and it just it never works out. And, and, you know, I think it just came to a head last night that um, that turned into something that just should have never happened. I mean, it just it's so ugly. But um, apparently he was he was pretty abusive towards the people who tried to calm him down, and it just escalated and, and turned into something it, it never should have. But I, there's such a you know, it's kind of a sick feeling in my stomach about it again because of what he meant to the organization. But it's been uh, it's not been a good relationship for a long time. No, and I, and I know it. I I, I want to make sure because you know I know you you work at Madison Square Garden, you work with MSG, um, but it just seems to me and that that. Oakley's reaction that the security guards in front of him were the representatives of James Dolan. At least he viewed it that way. And the the boiling point had reached to the point where now he's in public. He knows it's on ESPN. He's dressed to the nines. And and he's he's taking it out on these guys because he can't get to Jim Dolan. Period. Not only physically there, but literally he says he's tried to reach out to him and meet with him 15 times. Is that a fair assessment? In a way. Well, you hear you hear both sides, Rich, and, and you know, Oakley's one of my all-time favorite players, and had such a wonderful relationship with him um, as a team broadcaster as well. And you know, I've been hoping for for a long time now that it, that it works it out. But he sometimes has been his own worst enemy. I mean, it's okay you criticize the organization, you don't like the way they're going, but it's gotten personal a few times. It's gotten uh, over the line is probably the best way to say it. And last night, from from talking to different people, you know, some of the NYPD uh, policemen who were there said he just was very abusive. The language was really inappropriate, and they had no choice but but to uh, to get him to come out uh, or throw him out uh, because he didn't. He was asked to quiet down. He he didn't, and then when he wouldn't, then he was asked to leave, and he wouldn't. And that's when they had to physically bring him out. And it, again, it should have never come to that. But um, you know, from from the people I talked to with security and mm -hmm. and uh, the NYPD, they really didn't have any choice. Mike Breen joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. And then last one on this one, and I want to turn the page to this monster game you will be calling on ABC uh, on Saturday night. So why 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 won't the owner of the Knicks? just realized that he is one of the most beloved figures in franchise. And even though he has said what he said, uh, be, be, uh, be a bigger guy, knowing that Charles is just uh, maybe lashing out because he's hurt and sit down. Like, why, why can't we get this thing together? Certainly now that this could even be the impetus that this happened. Well, I'm actually that. hoping that, you know, it hits rock bottom with this, that maybe it'll, it'll bring about something of, of some kind of, um, meeting of the minds, and, and they can figure it out. But I, I will say this, and this I know for a fact, is the Knicks have extended many olive branches. Um, it's not like uh, Charles is asked to meet with the owner and they say no. They've tried several times. I mean, he has some good friends who are in the organization. Alan Houston's been in the front office for years, and Alan has tried to to get Oak to to you know cut back on the on the rhetoric and the and the critical. So, so they can establish it. Herb Williams, when he was an assistant coach, did the same thing. Donnie Walsh really made an attempt uh, to bring him back in to the point of saying, hey, let's, let's bring you in and work in the front office with us. And those were not met with, um, with the most positive results. So it's not like it hasn't tried. Um, you know, Oak is, Oak is his own man, and he has always spoken his mind. I think in this time it, it's gone a little too far, and – you know, when, when a guy owns the building and owns the team, 
and someone is is trashing him and his team on a regular basis, I mean, you're not you can't expect them to welcome you with open arms. That's just not not reality. And if and if Oakley feels that way, and and God bless him if he does, uh, but he can't expect to have it both ways from that standpoint. So um, I, I think that's kind of where it, where it where it lands. But I, I do say, Rich, that they have extended the olive branch to him a number of times Mike, over the years. Mike Breen joining me here uh, on uh, the Rich Eisen show. So you're going from the frying pan and the fire to a fired up frying pan in Oklahoma City on Saturday night here. Durant's first return. How are you expecting this to go down in Oklahoma City on Saturday night, Mike? Well, I'm in the minority. Um, my partners, Jeff and Mark, uh, uh, as they love to do, have mocked me on this and will continue to mock me on this. I I'm thinking more positive than most. Um, the Oklahoma City fan base is one of the most unique fan bases in the NBA. They're, they're incredible on their devotion and loyalty to their, uh, to their players. And Durant was a special case because not only did he give them everything he had for all those years on the court, he was so active off the court, especially in troubled times, whether it was a, a weather disaster or um, any kind of charity with regarding children. He was, he was in the forefront with money, with time. Um, he was special in that community. So they have many great thoughts about him. Now, obviously, some will feel betrayed by him leaving, and especially leaving to the team that had knocked him out of the playoffs in such a, a gut-wrenching way. But but they also remember that other part, and, and I think he's going to get a lot of love. Will he get some booze? Absolutely. Uh, and probably during the game when it's competition against their team. But I'd be surprised if he didn't get a lot of love because because of the type of player and, more importantly, person he was in that community. And so, I mean, but Durant has saved some of his most special performances this year for the two times that Oklahoma City showed up in his house. The, uh, the 40 points on 16 shots, the 39 points the first time they saw each other. What, what do you expect the uh, Westbrook and Durant stat lines to be going well, in? I, I think the war... <laughs> Durant's teammates are aware of what it means, and I think they made made sure and went out of their way to make sure that, that he had plenty of opportunities to shine, which, as you said, he did. He's had two spectacular games against them. Um, the other unfortunate thing is the, is the Durant-Westbrook relationship. You know, there was always talk that they, you know, they, had, they didn't like each other or there was some bitterness there. That, that really wasn't true. I mean, it was competitiveness sometimes that they got mad at each other. But if you go back, watch the tape of um, – Kevin Durant's MVP speech when he basically thanked everyone in the organization personally. It was really one of the one of the most heartwarming MVP speeches you'll ever see. But the part he talked about Westbrook was it was an incredible friendship that was portrayed by Durant, and I, and I think it was completely genuine. There was no question, and and Russell felt that way. That the same thing. Um, now does. Does Westbrook feel betrayed by the way it was handled? Yes, and I think Kevin has even said that uh, he probably could have handled it a little bit better. Uh, but I just hope that those two somehow figure it out a way to – and they don't have to do it in any public manner to satisfy our curiosity, but just for the friendship that they built over the years that somehow they can get it back together again. Uh, it's just so many people. It's just everyone get along, right? Let's get Dolan and Charles <laughs> together. It's, Let's it's get... maddening. But you know what? It, it's also why – you know, we're doing what we're doing because of the passion and the, the loyalty and dedication of sports and, and fans, and and that's what makes it all so much fun. And then there's Carmelo and Phil, too, Mike. I mean, Chris, Crystal Ball, that one for me before I let you go here. How, how does the Phil Jackson, New York Nick, Carmelo Anthony relationship finish up here or wind up? I, I don't know how the relationship's going to change because it's obviously not good. And, uh, you know, the understatement of the year is – is when your your team president and your star player have such a disconnect. It's it's just not a good thing for for a franchise. But I, I'm starting to think that that at least for this year, I don't think he's going anywhere. First off, he doesn't want to go. He really does want to stay. And I, I think any type of unpleasant feelings that he has is not going to make him change his mind. So the ball's in his court. So, but even if he does, right now. Uh, the teams that he's interested in going to or reportedly, and he has not given them a list of teams, what they're offering, you're not even going to get close to return. You rarely do when you trade a star player, but what the Clippers reportedly have offered, none of the big three, what Cleveland has offered, obviously Kevin Lowe is not a 
part of that uh, from what we've heard. Um, it's not even close, and I, it would be hard for Phil Jackson, even if he got the no trade clause to be waived, to make a deal and have it make sense at this particular time. So um, I have no inside info on it, but my guess is that he's going to be here through the rest of the season. Well, th- we'll know he's in trouble if somebody in a suit and tie comes up and asks him for his ticket. Uh, we, know, we know that might be an issue when that happens. What a night, Mike. I mean, I, I honestly have never seen it. I mean, I guess, where does this rank? I asked this of John Barry when he was on before. Where, where does that, what you saw last night, rank for you? You know, we've all seen fights in the stands. We've seen players fight on the court. I've never seen a former player uh, of that particular franchise be escorted out of the building that way, never. So, uh, you know, we always say mm. this when we've seen everything. This, this without question, was a first to see something like that. But it's it's one that I, I certainly never wanted to see and hope don't have to see it again. Well, and I know, because I, I know, you know, your affinity for Oakley and obviously your, your steep tradition with the Knicks as well as somebody like me who grew up loving the franchise. You know, it, it's it was just a sad thing to see. And it was even more, you know, I, I'm like, wow, Mike's calling this. <laughs> I was sitting there at home thinking, oh, my gosh, you must have been dying a little bit inside. So I, I appreciate you calling in, Mike. Anytime, Rich. Always good to talk to you. Same here. That's Mike Breen. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.